Hola amigos, ¿qué tal? Still here from Spain Speaks with the Spain News update. And the Spanish government has changed its mind and is now allowing British teenagers into the country that have not been vaccinated. But more about that in just a moment. Firstly, a big thanks to all of the people that left comments on the last video. Lots of comments, lots of debate happening there as usual. Thanks to people that supported the channel through a donation or by buying me a beer or a coffee. Many thanks for that. Thanks to people that bought merchandise and a big thanks to my patrons on Patreon for your ongoing support. Now, let's get into the news. And as I said, the government here in Spain has changed its mind and will now allow unvaccinated British teenagers into the country. As we can see here, the government allows unvaccinated British children aged 12 to 18 to travel to Spain. The government is to allow British minors between the ages of 12 and 18 to travel to Spain without vaccinations. The ministerial order, which is being finalised by the Ministries of Health, Interior, Foreign Affairs and Industry, Tourism and Trade, will be published this Friday in the official State Gazette and will come into force on Saturday, official government sources have confirmed to El Confidencial. Until now, the health order prohibiting British nationals in this age group from travelling to Spain without the full travel ban had been accepted without fissures. Children under 12 years of age resident in non-EU countries were exempt from presenting a health certificate if they travelled to Spain accompanied by a vaccinated adult. So, there we go. The government now allowing unvaccinated British teenagers to travel to Spain. Just in time for the half-term vacations, but is it too late, considering that most people would have already booked holidays to somewhere else? Now, we all know that the relationship between Spain and Mexico has hit a rocky patch. The Mexican president said earlier in the week that he wants the two countries to have a break, and now he's complaining about Spanish companies in Mexico. But what is the power of Spanish companies in the Aztec country, and what are López Obrador's complaints about them? When Mexico's president, Andrés Manuel López Obrador, proposed on Wednesday to pause relations with Spain, it caused a veritable tsunami on both sides of the Atlantic. Spain is, in fact, the second largest investor in Mexico, second only to the United States, with 7,000 companies involved in sectors ranging from electricity to banking. During the first nine months of 2021, Spanish investment was 76 US billion, representing 12% of Mexico's foreign direct investment. So Spanish companies are fairly big investors in the Mexican economy, so probably better for the Mexican president to keep his mouth shut. And some people are saying that the reason that he has brought up this topic now is because his son has problems in the United States. Now, anybody living in Spain that has a car will know that it's very expensive to fill it up at the moment. In fact, fuel prices here are at record highs. So why are we paying 23% more for fuel than a year ago? The price of petrol in Spain climbs to an all-time high of €1.55 per litre, beating the record of a week ago, which surpassed the one set in September 2012, when a litre cost €1.52. Diesel, meanwhile, is at €1.44 a litre this week, equaling the all-time record set in 2012. This is despite the fact that the price of a barrel of Brent, the benchmark for setting the price of oil in Europe, is 20% cheaper than it was 10 years ago. To try to answer the question of how much impact the rise or fall in the price of a barrel of Brent has on the consumer's pocket, it should be noted that the retail price of fuels is determined by different components. On the one hand, taxes, which account for half of the price, and on the other, the price before taxes, which includes the wholesale cost of crude oil and distribution costs and margins. So fuel prices hitting record levels here in Spain, even more expensive to fill up the car today than it was back in 2012. And the funny thing is that a barrel of oil is 20% cheaper than it was back then. So why are we paying more today? Well, obviously, more taxes and higher distribution costs and greater margins. Now there are elections scheduled for this Sunday in the autonomous community of Castilla y Leon, and so important are these elections that they have made the pages of The Economist. And as we can see, the headline from The Economist, Spain's empty middle flexes its political muscles. I have four children, says Blanca, over a midday glass of wine with olives. None of them lives here. There are 156 residents registered in Casarejos, down almost half from 25 years ago. Locals differ on how many children live in the village, but all use just one hand to count them. Blanca is complaining to Laura Gil, a candidate for Soria Ya, in the regional elections in Castile and León, scheduled for February the 13th. Soria Ya is a new party that will compete in Soria, one of the region's nine provinces. Allied groups will run in other provinces too, unified loosely under the banner of España Baciada, 
or Emptied Spain. This slogan is a twist on Empty Spain, a book published by Sergio del Molino, a journalist, in 2016. The parties say the countryside is not simply empty, but is being emptied by neglect that gives young people no choice but to leave in search of work and public services. So the Sodia Ya party and the España Bateada platform getting their word out to the rest of the world through The Economist. And let's be honest, a lot of Castilla y Leon is no country for young people, so let's see if this platform can turn that situation around. Now there's some good news for people here in Spain that have been delaying COVID-19 vaccination, and it is that Novavax will be available shortly. And as we can see here, Novavax, the first traditional vaccine with which Spain wants to immunize skeptics soon. The fifth vaccine, authorized by the European Union, will arrive shortly in Spain, health sources assure news. In fact, everything is ready to receive and inoculate the first doses of Nuvaxavid produced by the American pharmaceutical company Novavax. Doses that in Spain will be inoculated to people who have not been able to be vaccinated or who have received incomplete vaccination due to allergies to any of the components of the other vaccines available or who have not yet been vaccinated due to other medical indications. Now let's have a look at a summary of the health situation in Spain and we can see the accumulated incidence rate now down to 1,566. Hospital pressure remains high but has dropped to 10.9% and ICU pressure remains high at 17.4%. Now there's some bad news for some of the Madrid jet set as an entire golf course built in a protected area must be demolished, a Spanish court has ruled. An entire golf resort, four-star hotel, and nearly 200 houses must be destroyed after being built in a protected natural area, Spain's highest court has ruled, following a 14-year legal battle. The luxury marina Isla de Baldecanas development, which features 185 villas, a four-star hotel, and an artificial beach, should be demolished according to a Supreme Court decision published Tuesday. The development was built on an island, La Isla de Baldecanas, in a reservoir in the Extremadura region, western Spain, with hundreds more villas and a second hotel slated to be added to the site. The luxury development is around 100 miles west of Madrid, and it boasts the closest fine sand beach to the Spanish capital, according to its website. It's so bad news, as I said, for some members of the Madrid jet set, or pijos as they are known here in Spain, as the luxury development that was built on a protected area is set to be demolished. But again, who allows things like this to happen in the first place? That's the question. Now let's have a look at some of the comments from previous videos. One here from Paul, glad I didn't buy a holiday home in Spain. As being British, I would be stopped from using it to the fullest and will be paying lots of money just for it to be empty half the year. My brother has lived there for 10 years and loves it and wouldn't be anywhere else. Yeah, Paul, thanks for the comment and obviously referring to that 90 day rule, which is causing a lot of British people to question their investment here in Spain. And you're right. And I imagine a lot of people are asking the question, why buy a house here? if you can't enjoy it to the fullest. But as we know, this is all part of the UK being a third country now to the European Union, and there are limits on how long people can stay. And nobody seems to know if this rule will change anytime soon, which is unfortunate for a lot of British people. One here from Wendy, the latest film with Penelope Cruz, Parallel Women, is just amazing. It covers several themes and shows some wonderfully authentic Spanish food. A must-see for aficionados. Yeah, Wendy, thanks for the comment. And as we saw the other day, Penelope has again been nominated for an Academy Award for her role in the movie that you mentioned there, Parallel Women. And her husband, Javier Bardem, has also been nominated for an Academy Award for his role in a movie about Lucille Ball and Desi Arnaz Jr. And wouldn't it be interesting if they both walk away with statues in hand? Time will tell. One here from Can. Can you talk about the recent murders and power struggles between Latin gangs of Dominicans, Colombians, and Ecuadorians in Spain? Is Spain a safe country, or have the immigration measures of the far-left Unidas Podemos party caused all this? Wouldn't Spain be better off with a more protectionist immigration policy like in the UK? It worries me that the central government seems to be doing nothing to tackle this growing insecurity problem. Yeah, Ken, thanks for the comment. And the first thing I'll say is that I don't think the policies of Unidas Podemos have anything to do with Latin gangs in this country, simply because Latin gangs have existed here long before Podemos was invented. So if a political party were to take the blame for poor immigration policies over the years, it would be either the PP party or the Pessoa party who were in charge when mass immigration in this country happened. And although these Latin American gangs are making headlines at the moment for events that happened in Madrid last weekend, in my opinion, Spain is still a safe country 
if you compare it to the countries where these people originate from. And let's be honest, in any country where you have high immigration and high youth unemployment, these problems could always happen. One here from Australia. Hi Stuart, we are sorry we can't live stream with you due to the time difference here in New South Wales, but we certainly are enjoying your new venture and wish you well. We're looking forward to the borders reopening soon and hopefully see our families in Europe. It will be good for you to visit WA or vice versa. Keep up the good work, stay safe and thank you very much for the Spanish news. Estrella and Bob. Yeah, hi guys, thanks for the comment and good to see that you are still watching the videos and sorry that you can't participate in the live streams because of that time difference between here and Australia. I too am looking forward to seeing my family down there again in Australia when the WA borders open up again. Don't know when that's going to happen, but hopefully it will be soon. Because as we know, at the moment, it's difficult to get into Western Australia and it's difficult to get out. And as long as they've got that quarantine period in place, I won't be going back. It's different in New South Wales because you're a lot more open there. So hopefully you guys can get out and visit family in Spain and hopefully your family in Spain can get down and visit you sometime soon. One here from Steve, IT manager. Just for information, Malaga Airport is not running as normal. A massive queue to get through passport control, adding an hour to arrival times. Just two people checking passports, even when several jets have landed. The automatic system was closed. I guess the robots have COVID. So be warned if you have transport booked or people collecting you from Malaga Airport. Yes, yeah, Steve, thanks for the comment. And again, somebody complaining about Malaga Airport. And to be honest, I'm not sure what's happening down there at that airport. Long queues, plenty of flights coming in, and only two people on passport control. So as Steve said, be warned if you're traveling to that part of Spain. And finally, one here from Stephen. Hi, Stuart, just wanted to make a comment on your live broadcast this evening, which I missed, but I'm catching up with it now. Your picture was absolutely superb, lovely color quality, and the sound was spot on. Looking forward to your next update. Cheers, mate, Steve in Manilva. Yes, yeah, Steve, thanks for the comment, and good to see that you enjoyed the improved quality of my live stream yesterday, even though you missed it. I invested in a few gadgets to improve the quality, so good to see that it was appreciated. However, a few people did complain about the sound quality, saying that it was too low, so I'm gonna have to work on that. And if all goes according to plan, the next live stream will be on Sunday, at 7 p.m. So hopefully I'll see you guys there. On that note, I'll wrap the video up. Questions and comments, please leave them in the section below. Debate the video out as you normally do. Give it a thumbs up if you liked it, thumbs down if you didn't. I'll see you in the next one. Hasta luego.